Welcome back to the Neuro Pokemon Cup series. Today we're here at Orlando International Speedway for the running of the Auto Trader 500. This is a super speedway under the lights, but it's a little bit different than what we're, what we're used to seeing at tracks like these. Instead of making left turns, they make right turns. It is in the opposite. This track goes in the opposite direction of every NASCAR Sprint Cup oval. Instead of left turns, they make right turns. And this will be a challenge for these drivers to deal with making right turns instead of left. And it will be a It'll be a, an, a great race. We, we expect to see an exciting race here at this track. As a, one of the races we've had previously here, um, it was one of the closest finishes in Pokemon Cup history. It was decided by one one thousandth of a second. And uh, hopefully we will have that kind of finish today, tonight here in Orlando. As we return to the track that makes right turns. And here's your winner from... P1 winner, your pole position driver for today's race is Alex Rago. And Anthony Lopez will also be in row one. In row two, Connor Breton, Cody Hagen, Sean Harpel, Nick Pericles make up row three. Alex Tanker, David Johansson make up row four. Noah Ponzer, Tony Green make up row five. My apologies for the little pause there. Just was trying to be sure I was right. But anyway, let's hear our famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines. This is a super speedway, like I said, so expect these drivers to make aggressive moves. Expect to see four, five, maybe even six wide here tonight. And there's not a lot of room for that, even in this big track like this. So they've got to be very careful in handling big pack situations because one little slip and a big crash will take out half if not almost all the field hopefully we'll see less of that t tonight hopefully we stay clean for most if not all of the race the pace car is about to go on the pit road these guys are going to be making right turns instead of left turns I know I said that a lot uh, earlier but I'm just trying to just trying to let you guys know, this is one tricky oval. Here we go, Alex Rago going to lead the field of 42 cars here in race number 5. And I forgot to mention PJ Williams, he is, a, he, he is the first two-time winner this season. He's starting near in the back, near the top 10. The green flag is waved here at Orlando. Like I said, P.J. Williams, he's won two of the last three races here. He's on a hot streak. We'll see if he'll become the first three-time winner this season. And they waste no time in doing pack racing. They're going three wide. And they're going four wide in the back. Now they're going to go four wide. Here they come to the breaking turn. And they're still three wide. Oh, they're five wide in the middle. Let's hope they don't wreck out. And first lap, I'm surprised they've kept it clean. First lap was led by Nick Pericles. Gonna keep an eye on this pack though because they're going four wide. Ooh, Pichu on the bumper. Ooh, Pichu and Zach Fitzwater sharing contact. Whoa, look at this. Tasha Radao almost on the yellow line. Now there's a wreck. They're crashing. Oh, a big wreck. Just about everybody gets in it. Wow. That's the biggest wreck I've ever seen. I don't know. I think Co I think the leaders made it out alive. It's Isaiah Bernash. No wait. Alex Ragow's the le no. Ferd Frenadette Gabot's the race leader. In the big crash, the big one is struck here at Orlando. If you thought Talladega and Daytona were the only tracks to get the big one, well, you were wrong. This or even Orlando gets the big one. 
I wonder who began. It was the 42 of Tony Green, who was the leader on lap number two. And let's see what happened. Let's see if we can get a good view of what happened. Here it is. Cody Hagen and Eric Hyden clips the 42. And then he got up and to right everybody else. And look at those drivers made it through the rack. But not everybody made it through. In fact, I think three-fourths of the field got in the mess. The big one. Yikes. The biggest wreck I've seen since that race at greensville Spartanburg a couple seasons ago. It had a big wreck like this one. And this one, though, well... This one might be the biggest one yet. Might be even bigger than the one we had at GSP. Boy, was it a rack. And here's a look and here's a spectacular look of the incident at the spectator view. There you see, that's how big the crash was. Amazing. E amazing wreck to start off the nine in Orlando. Gee, I wonder how many drivers are out of this race already. Well, right now it has not gotten an official word yet. It'll reorganize soon. And we got a lot of drivers retired. Half the field is now out of the race while Brandon Nichols and Angel Navarro are still Nichols is still on track Navarro is on pit road so so half the field only 21 cars are on the lead lap right now and there you see the field that has all been retired and boy was it a massive crash I hope I was hoping we we not see that tonight here in Orlando but well we got it anyway Dylan Thoreau leads us to back to green. They had pit stops during the yellow flag. Ferdinand Gabot led on the decaution, but Thoreau came out first on pit road when everybody took pit stops during the yellow. I would expect that would not be the that would not be the only time they come down to pit road tonight. Bernadette Gabot picks up where he left off, takes the lead. There you see Kyle Collins in the 13 going for the race lead. He's getting drafting from Ryan Casey. You'd think that Stuart Haas teammates Thoreau and Casey would help each other out in this situation. Unfortunately, Thoreau is forced on the high line. But no problem for Casey. He's going to take the lead even without draft. And now he's got some drafting help from Thoreau. Oh, but Thoreau wants the lead. He wants the lead for himself. Now you see Casey trying to block the low line. That was a little lag bubble there. My apologies. Dylan Young is now battling for second in the number two car. And um, Thoreau just recently became a new member of the Neura group that, that's run by, that runs the Pokemon Cup Series. Along with me and Trent the Hedgy, Trent Dunham. So now Dylan Young wants to join in on the wins list again. He's been winning a lot of races in here in this series and now he's trying to win again this season. But I'll have to get by Ryan Casey first. And here he comes. Dylan Thoreau, no, Dylan Young gets the race lead. And meanwhile, O'Neill Balvin, one of the final four competitors last season, is in fourth. But might drop to fifth, Ferdinand Gabot looks to make a cap comeback. And here comes the six machine of Chloe Baker. Chloe Baker 
A female driver has not won in a Pokemon Cup race in a long time. And now Chloe's looking to break the winless streak for female drivers. Now you see Stuart Haas Racing sandwiching the 27 of Gabot. Ten laps to go here in Orlando. We've had a big crash that took out almost half the field early in the race. And now all that's left is Z drivers to compete for the win. Look at the 14 of Alex Hawkins. We see three Stuart Haas cars right now running in the top five. Or top ten I should say. Almost top five. Looks like Gabot is helping out Chloe Baker. Get take her lead take her lead. Nine to go. There's Gabot now taking the race lead away from Baker after helping her draft to the front and Gabot's going to do it on her on his own. Kyle Collins it's now going to be a battle between 13 and 14 for second place maybe for the race lead. And now they see a lap car. That's Abby Sachs in the 98. Eight laps to go. Oh, wow. They got through that easily. But it was really close, though. That was very close. They have Isaiah Bernash as the next lap car, but he's a long ways out. And look at this, P.J. Williams is back, wait, is P.J., yes he is, he's in contention, he was ninth last time, and now he's looking for his second straight win in his third in four races, an unprecedented streak it would be to start off the season in, in the Pole 1 Cup Series, David Johansson had a similar run last season, no, a previous season, David Johansson had a similar run, seven to go. Now Ryan Casey takes the lead, and here comes Zachary Fitzwater. Both are trying to end their winless streaks. Same for O'Neill Balvin. Balvin looks to get in back into the chase, hopefully to compete again for the championship. And now Balvin coming down, but he's slowing down. He's going to pit road. He's going to take his pit stop. So I knew this wasn't going to be the, that last pit stop happening during the caution. It was not going to be the last. So these guys are going to have to save fuel and save those tires too because they can worn out pretty quickly at a track like this. Just six laps to go. Who's, got, who's ever got the best pit strategy is going to pretty much win this race. Dylan Young's going to take the race lead, but will they decide to pit? Here comes Chloe Baker trying for second place. Now they're going to slow down. They better slow down a little soft. Oh no, Gambot is around. Gambot got turned around trying to get into pit road. Oh, fretted at Gambot. He got turned trying to get to pit road and now he can't get in. And now he's going to have to go on the apron. He's going to have to go again and that is going to pretty much end his chance of winning this race. Oh, man. Five laps to go. These guys are going to have to take a pit stop. Fetty McDowell and Ryan Casey are left standing right now, but we'll see. And they're going to come down. Better take it easy, guys. And they did. Just made it through. They're still ruled as the leaders, but we'll see if on the next scoring line, we'll see if there'll be new leaders or they will actually keep the lead. Four laps to go, and Fetty McDowell was scored as the leader. So Fetty still has the lead. 
And there's Gabot making his way onto pit road. A costly mistake on the 78. It's going to end his chance of winning the race. And now these guys are out of pit road. Let's see if the race, it'll be pretty close for the race. There's that other pack. Third place is PJ Williams. Will PJ be able to catch up to these guys? First, he's got to deal with the two of Dylan Young, though. So I don't think he might have to deal with it. And look at Dylan Young. He got a better line on the high side. And he made the pass on the high line. An impressive move by Dylan Young. Now he's going to try to use the high line again to pass by second. He does. He passes Ryan Casey. And now Dylan Young's closing in on Fetty McDowell. Three laps to go. Look at the run he got on the high line. He did it. Dylan Young is your new leader. He got the high line to work. You don't see the high line getting used pretty often because that never works here in any track. But... Dylan Young, somehow, some way, he made it work. Now he's got to hold off these pack of cars for three laps. Or two and a half laps, I should say. O'Neill Balvin's going to go by PJ for second. But still, PJ's been doing impressively in these past couple races. Two laps to go for Dylan Young. Can he hold off the pack? Balvin's competing for second place. There you see Alex Hawkins as well. They're going to try to draft each other in hopes of closing in on the two. It looks like they're closing in a little bit. This could set up an, a wild finish. Here we go. Dylan Young's going to come to the white flag. He's got good pitch strategy right now. He's hoping to get the hoping the lead holds on. White flag is out for Dylan Young with one to go. Dylan Young, the newest member in the Nura group, he's looking to celebrate it with a win here in Orlando. Chloe Baker gonna go by for second. Lap car of Abby Sex. And Dylan Young avoids it. Baker gets a run. O'Neill Bevin on the high side uses the highlight to his advantage. He gets the pass for the lead. Dylan Young was slowed by the lap car. Off the final corner on a surprising move. O'Neill Belvin might just win it. PJ Williams trying to make a move. It's not going to be enough. O'Neill Belvin wins again here in Orlando. Oh man, PJ Williams had one more shot on the high line, but he couldn't make the move in time. O'Neill Belvin wins again. He becomes a chaser for now. Dylan Young, heartbreak as the lap car slowed him down from a potential victory. Wow, man, PJ almost one more turn, and, Dil and PJ would have had his third win this season. And here's the margin of victory. It was pretty close, but O'Neill Balvin makes his way back to the chase with a win here in Orlando in a close finish. Thanks to Lap Car Vavi Sachs, though. Final margin was eight one thousandths of a second. Not as close as we had before. Back in Orlando a couple seasons ago, we had one one thousandths of a second. But still pretty close. And looking back in the wins list, O'Neill Balvin, this is his third career Pokemon Cup Series win. He was a two-time winner last season, and now he's won again. He'll be in. He'll probably he'll try to make it in the chase. Hopefully, if not, if not more other different winners don't set up in World Tour, but you never know. And that's the rest of the results. And here's the other drivers that retired from the race.
And that'll be it from Orlando, and we'll see you guys at our next race, our first dual weekend of the season. It'll be at Levi Strauss Speedway, a crazy short track. A lot of wrecks happen, but only two winners will come out of the track out of this weekend in the Raisins 49 doubleheader at Levi Strauss Speedway. The points, again, are up on Facebook, on P2 London's Facebook, but if you don't have Facebook, don't worry. We'll have an update, points update video coming up soon. Not sure when, but we'll have it soon. But anyway, O'Neill Balvin, the winner here from Orlando International Speedway by eight one thousandths of a second. And we'll and hope you'll we'll hope we hope you'll join us at Levi Strauss Speedway. We'll see you there.